And so what do we have to do now? Well, we want to find the best H. So these are my options for you, and I'll let you do some work and thinking, some calculations, and choose which one is um, the best one. Okay, so where do these options come from? Well, um, here's the function. We have a value at one endpoint, zero. We have a value at another endpoint, also zero. So we knew that because these are infinitely thin or infinitely short, uh, infinitely narrow or infinitely short barrels. And then we also have, now if you find the critical points of this one, it's a cubic, and um, uh, because of the structure of the function, it has, I guess I've already eliminated a negative critical point. And so it has a critical point at 2 L naught over root 3 and another one that I'm not interested in. And so when I evaluate it, this one clearly comes out to be the highest value of the three. It, this one beats out 0 and 0 for sure. So that is the correct answer here, D. We want to choose H to be 2L naught over root 3. Okay, so here's a um, web page that you can read about to learn some history of uh, this Kepler's problem. And there's a picture of one of the barrels. And that is just about everything I wanted to say, well, except for here's a, a summary with a little, it's, it's basically the um, protocol I, I mapped out at the beginning, but with a little bit more detail put in. So um, what, what I'm advising is that you draw some sketches and establish an expectation. This is something that most students skip, and I think it's to their detriment. I think you could gain a lot of information easily and quickly. And it's difficult to do this at first, but the more you practice it, the better you'll get at doing it. Then you need to determine an objective function, and if necessary, if it happens to be a constrained optimization problem. Now, don't get confused into thinking that all problems will have uh, constraints. Sometimes there are kind of hidden constraints that you kind of just build into it as you're writing down the model, and you don't have an explicit one. What you need to do is make sure that your objective function has one, um, one variable, and if it doesn't have one, just one variable, then you're going to have a constraint that you need. But if it already has one variable, there's no constraint necessary. So I would do some more sketching and update your expectation based on you know any thinking that you've done that may change what you had drawn or expecting before. And then next step is to use the constraint to reduce to one variable. And that's because when I say make life easy, we know how to do calculus to solve uh, one variable optimization problem. Um, and so that's what your target is. Next, the absolute extremum problem is to find the endpoints and all critical points and evaluate F at each of those and pick the largest or smallest depending on whether you're maximizing or minimizing your objective function. So that's the next one here. And then finally, the biggest value is, or the, I guess I should say, the extreme value, either highest or lowest, is what you are looking for. And then you want to go back and check against your expectation. Back up here. And if they don't agree, figure out which one of those two was wrong. All right, so that is everything I was going to say today about optimization.